Hey everyone, Lucas here, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining why it's so incredibly dangerous and problematic to be low in iron. So, this video is basically going to be focusing on how iron affects the brain um, and how we feel. So, first of all, I want to break down how iron can affect our mood. So. To put simply, uh, neurotransmitters are chemicals that are produced by the brain, um, and a lot of these neurotransmitters are actually produced from the amino acids found in protein. So, for example, a piece of chicken contains a variety of amino acids. Um, one of them is the amino acid phenylalanine. So, and don't freak out, phenylalanine is, although it's found in Coca-Cola, it is not dangerous for majority of the population. It's actually an essential amino acid. So what happens here is if we are low in iron, we cannot produce the neurotransmitter dopamine because if you look at this sequence, you can see that phenylalanine is the top, basically the top um, amino acid, which then, which then gets converted into tyrosine. Um, with a variety of cofactors, but to get from tyrosine to L-DOPA You need iron if you do not have iron su Sufficient amounts of iron you cannot convert tyrosine to L-DOPA and what that means is that you're basically rate limited by the amount of iron that you have because iron actually regulates that um, tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme which will govern how much dopamine you can produce. So think about the repercussions of that. With low dopamine, you have low motivation, uh, low drive, low focus, or poor focus, uh, poor attention span, poor concentration. Um, so that's where iron can severely affect your cogn cognition um, and even your gen just general like mental status as well. So. Another point to this is anhedonia. So anhedonia basically means the inability to experience pleasure or maybe a blunted uh, pleasure response to things that are usually pleasurable. For example, um, a good example is, uh, for example, eating sugar or uh, orgasms, listening to music, uh, doing things you love. Anhedonia is a blunted pleasure response to that. So. What happens is if we're low in iron, basically we don't produce enough dopamine receptors. So we actually don't have enough of the dopamine D2 receptors. Um, and that's going to be affecting the, the brain's ability to handle the dopamine that's produced. We want to be able to have the dopamine bind to the receptors to activate and to exert the effects. Um, thirdly, we know that iron is going to affect energy, um, and that's because iron plays a critical role in ATP production. So, basically, if you're low in iron, your body's unable to produce sufficient amounts of ATP. Uh, point number four is anxiety. So, this is interesting. Uh, funnily enough, if you are low in iron, uh, basically what that means is you actually get more norepinephrine, which is like the fight or flight neurotransmitter. So, um, you know, in rat studies that are low, where, they're, where the rats are low in iron, uh, they actually produce a lot more norepinephrine, which is quite bizarre. Um, and in terms of sleep, well, we know that low ferritin and low iron um, can affect sleep quality, um, and that that's indicative by the number of sort of the number of wake ups that people experience. Um, and also the it would affect REM sleep as well because it's acting as a cofactor elsewhere um, so in terms of blood testing so uh, it's probably the most important thing it does not matter if you do, like don't have symptoms or you do have symptoms you really need to get a blood test let's say every three to six months to keep an eye on your iron status um, because there are a variety of markers that can basically tell us how well your body is regulating iron, storing iron, um, and using iron. So uh, blood testing is absolutely paramount. Um, and
And my final point is just basically don't be deficient because you're compromising your mental health, you're compromising your energy levels, you're compromising your sleep, and in general, you're just compromising your quality of life. So um, the reason why I'm talking about this is because I managed to make myself low in iron by donating blood too often um, and taking high-dose curcumin, um, vitamin B1, and a few other supplements, things like that, which can lower iron. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things, and that's another point to note, is that there are a lot of things that can deplete iron. Um, for example, coffee can deplete iron. Um, and curcumin and, and milk thistle and some other herbs as well. So, hopefully you guys found this uh, video useful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Um, be sure to check out my website, ergogenic.health. I've got some amazing webinars and masterclasses there um, and some really novel and unique uh, products from around the globe. So definitely check that out um, and stay tuned for the next uh, installment.